This is chapter six of Brooks Lingua Faction. From persistence to memory. I'm doing this in PK form. Six minutes, 40 seconds, 20 slides. Specifically in chapter six, I am focusing on the definition that a platonic idealism, which carries through until today, defines memory as the the observation of presence or absence. So, in chapter 6, Brooke opens with Edward Corbett, who writes, quote, After rhetoric came to be concerned mainly with written discourse, there was no further need to deal with memorizing. There will be no consideration in this book on this aspect of rhetoric. Unquote. Corbett 143. Brooke then follows this quote with Derrida's rebuttal. Quote, no, the technical structure of the archiving archive also determines the structure of the archivable context, even in its very coming into existence and in its relationship to the future. The archivization produces as much as it records the event. Unquote. 143. I agree with Brooks' rejection, as well as Derrida's rejection of Corbett's view of memory within the written word and the written world as obsolete. Such a statement on Corbett's part resonates a parroting perspective he has on human brains, including his own. All our brains can be, according to Corbett, are little storage units that absorb text without any acknowledgement of subjective truth and how that subjective truth may or may not change whatever we absorb. And no wonder, for Corbett's parroting of platonic ideals within Phaedrus shows that he too aligns himself with Plato's self-righteous objectivism Objectivism that decided that writing would necessitate forgetfulness for everyone. To address this binary discrepancy, Brooke calls upon Gregory Ulmer. And this is what Ulmer says about it. Quote, Plato is condemning writing, not just as, quote, writing down, unquote, but as a whole theory of the relation of memory to thought. Plato's diatribe against the sophists condemns artificial memory, or hypomnesia in general, including meninotechnics, the system of topii, or commonplaces to developed but for rhetorical training. Ulmer, 1985, page 69. Because Plato believed in the realm of the forms, an alternate realm where perfection of everything is present and to be strived for, although as mortal humans can never reach it, nor even exist within it, the exclusionary oppression implicit in this binary thinking is expressed and within this context as memory, according to Platonic ideals, is a state defined by presence or absence, this acceptance of objective perfection is one that rejects our own subjective truths and how they are valid. Honestly, sometimes I dream about Roland Barthes kicking Plato's ass. Another complaint I have that I feel Brooke also shares as he leans towards Derrida's ideas which reject platonic binaries is that Corbett is something of a parrot himself. Brooke's statements regarding Corbett's perspective as reducing memory to a question of storage on 143 signal me to think that Corbett truly subscribes to platonic ideas not only for his cohorts and his students, but also for himself. And what really infuriates me is that A. Corbett is an academic, 
and B, as a successful academic, he has the professional weight that does not necessitate rehashing old binary bullshit. Also, C, which is probably the worst thing that I have against this whole idea. Corbett wrote the pre-mentioned quote, and this is where it came from. And it came from a 1999 textbook. It does not come from a peer-reviewed journal. It was derived from a textbook ironically entitled, Classical Rhetoric for the Modern Student. So, thank you, Plato, and a very sincere thank you to those brave and groundbreaking professors who continue to reiterate and support platonic binaries and objectivisms. How in the hell do so many academics continue to praise Plato outside the seminary? Brooke, and I think this is why Brooke reasserts that more than, quote, more than any of the other four canons, memory is the one canon whose stats, as in pres practice, is in need of rehabilitation. But there are new media sites that will enable us to rethink this canon. Unquote. So, this is why I chose Persistence is Memory for my chapter, and also why I feel everyone should read this text, because it all altered... Uh, um, thank you. Good.